Promoting sustainable construction in Colombia is the continuation of IFC involvement in regulatory advisory services to the Colombian government, in particular to the Ministry of Environment, Housing and Development. In 2010, the Ministry requested the assistance of the International Finance Corporation to design, propose and implement the green building codes in the country. Various municipalities such as Bogotá, Medellín and Barranquilla have also expressed interest in receiving technical assistance. Nosotros, como colombianos, tenemos una responsabilidad mayor en la protección del medio ambiente. Even though Colombia is not a significant CO2 pollutant at a global level, the country's government has prioritized green building and is promoting a number of initiatives to improve environmental conditions in the country. The political will is there, as was made clear by President Juan Manuel Santos's recent speech, where he stated that the country should become a leader on climate change mitigation in the region. Somos el país con más biodiversidad por kilómetro cuadrado del mundo. ¿Cuál es el reto entonces? Continuar trabajando hacia la definición de criterios ambientales para el diseño y la construcción de vivienda urbana y yo me referiría más que a la vivienda urbana al todo el sector edificador. Since the new government began its term of office in August 2010, President Santos has emphasized the development of the construction sector as one of the country's five economic engines. Propone cambiar la escala de producción de vivienda como lo ha propuesto el presidente Juan Manuel Santos. El tema de la construcción sostenible se vuelve vital. Definitivamente no podemos abordar esta política y no podemos abordar este empeño sin tener consideraciones con todo el rigor en materia ambiental. The construction sector grew at a rate of 16% in 2009 and 33% in 2010, building approximately 4 million square meters a year. Additionally, the government has set a target of 1 million houses to be built within the next four years, expected to be primarily low-cost housing. Based on these figures, it is crucial to develop basic regulations to promote energy efficiency and water conservation for buildings at all levels, from low-cost housing to high-end buildings. The government understands that sustainable construction is one of the most important components to mitigate climate change, as the construction sector represents 45% of national energy usage and 17% of national water consumption during building operation. Moreover, the private sector, which is an influential force within construction, is aware that it needs to develop initiatives to encourage sustainable construction and create a positive impact on the environment. Entities such as the Colombian Chamber of Construction and the Colombian Society of Architects have expressed interest in developing a public-private strategy for green building codes. Both public and private sectors have worked closely with the IFC during the mapping phase, the first of the four phases of this project. This pre-implementation activity tried to reflect the current situation, opportunities and difficulties to assess the feasibility of proposing and implementing the green building code in Colombia. During the mapping phase, the team undertook research in three main components. The technical component looked at the current building stock and its water and energy consumption. This information was further used on the energy model and the sensitivity analysis, which determined the potential savings and the reduction in terms of CO2. Also, best practices at national and international levels were analysed so as to learn from previous experiences. A legal component focused on the regulatory framework and current policies that could impact the green building codes in the country. The last component, communications, focused on the awareness and perception of key stakeholders, as well as the media and the public in general. Some of the key findings from the technical component are that Colombia has a diversity of climate zones and that these are closely related to energy consumption. In other words, while the consumption of energy of a high-income house in Bogotá is around 60 kilowatt hours per person, in Barranquilla, which is a hot climate, it is 158 kilowatt hours per person. Consumption in the hot climates is almost three times more than consumption in colder climates. Socioeconomic status also influences energy and water consumption. For example, water consumption of a high-income house can be double that of a low-income house. This was observed in all the three cities analysed. In conclusion, 
The higher the social and economic level, the higher the consumption. Some of these issues have already been addressed and were analysed in 10 exemplar buildings in Colombia built to best practice standards. These case studies help to understand which are the most used techniques and strategies in the country. Not surprisingly, passive design strategies were the most used, as they are considered cost effective. This is followed by active systems. Although green building is not new in Colombia, the media need to be trained in order to achieve a better understanding and interpretation of the field. In this way, mass media could be the way to convince the general public, professionals and developers of the benefits of green building. As part of this exercise, a mapping of the legal framework was undertaken, showing that environmental issues were addressed from national to local level. However, it was identified that these regulations should be restructured for an easy implementation. In conclusion, the creation of a national standard framework was identified. This should set the minimum conditions at national level, so that each municipality can develop their own guidelines depending on their own characteristics and needs. The building regulations will be targeting medium income housing and non-residential buildings only. Low income housing could be addressed with demonstration projects where no cost measures such as passive design are prioritised, keeping a balance between cost and quality. The regulations for high income housing and medium sized commercial could be addressed through incentives such as tax exemptions or increasing the buildability. For large commercial buildings, the regulation should be enforced, always keeping to a reasonable cost. This cost will then be recovered during the building operation through the water and energy savings.